Welcome to the Hammersold 6th Grade Science Screencast, Climate Regions, and Introduction. Come on in and enjoy the show. As you watch this screencast, you can stop it at any time to go back to hear something again. You will need to have the following materials available while watching. The handout titled, Climate Regions, and Introduction Screencast, and something to write with. If you have all of your materials, then let's get started. The Big Question. What characteristics make each of the climate regions different? By the end of the screencast, you should be able to name the three areas of the Earth that climate regions are based on and that use latitude to divide them, explain the differences in each of the six climate regions, and identify the differences in each of the zones found in five of the six climate regions. When we look at the Earth and think back to our study of seasons, it is clear that based on where you are, the climate can vary greatly. Scientists have divided the Earth into what we call climate regions based on the climate differences in these areas. Let's take a closer look at how this has been done. There are three main latitude areas on Earth that are defined by climate. The area around the equator is going to be our starting point. 23 and a half degrees north and south of the equator is known as the tropical area. The area 23 and a half degrees to 66 and a half degrees north and south of the tropical area are called the temperate latitude areas. The polar areas are the third areas that fall from 56 and a half degrees north or south of the temperate areas and stretch to the poles. The amount of sunlight each of these areas get greatly affects the climate of each area. This can be seen by examining how the rays of the sun are striking the earth in this picture. We will study six climate regions in this unit. They are tropical rainy, temperate marine, temperate continental, polar, dry, and highland. Tropical rainy, temperate marine, temperate continental, and polar are based on latitude. Dry and highland climates can be found anywhere in the world. You will answer questions six and seven and number eight as you learn about each climate region throughout this screencast. Here you can see the six climate regions we will be studying. Five of them are divided into areas called zones. Most of the information on this screencast comes from the website listed on the bottom of this screen. There are two zones in the temperate continental region. They are the humid continental and the subarctic. In these climates, there are extreme temperature variations. Humid continental has hot summers and cold winters. We live here. And in the subarctic, they have short, cool summers and long, cold winters, as in Alaska and central Canada. Humid, co humid continental climate is found in the interior of continents. This climate is mainly found in the northern hemisphere since there are no large land masses at the same latitude in the southern hemisphere. The humid continental climate is one of the few climates with four different seasons. Warm and humid summers, cool and dry falls, cold and harsh winters, and a warm and wet spring makes living in this zone have a unique variety of weather conditions. The humid continental zone has a wide range of temperatures, which means low cold temperatures and high warm temperatures. Humid continental climate has a misleading name. It is not always humid here. Between 20 and 50 inches of rain falls in this climate zone. The moisture is evaporated from the land at a slow, regular pace, which explains why precipitation falls regularly throughout all four seasons. A wide variety of plants are found in this region. Evergreen forests are found in the north and mix with deciduous trees and forests as you move south. Some areas of humid continental are covered in grasslands. These are sometimes called temperate grasslands. This climate is excellent for farming since it has warm summers and regular rainfall. The subarctic climate zone is usually found in the interior, not coastal areas of high latitude continents. It is also referred to as the taiga. Since there are no large continents in high latitudes in the southern hemisphere, subarctic climate is only found in the northern hemisphere. Subarctic climate has two seasons. The winter is long and extremely cold, with the cool to mild summers lasting only two to three months. The main cause of the temperatures in subarctic is latitude. Temperatures can reach negative 40 degrees in the winter and be as high as 85 degrees in the summer. There is very little evaporation because of the cold temperatures, so very little precipitation falls here. Between 10 and 20 inches of rain falls in the subarctic areas. Subarctic zones are covered in snow for most of the year. 
Not all trees are able to survive the long winters, but evergreen trees such as pine and spruce are hardly enough to survive the cold. Other ferns, shrubs, and grasses can be found during summer months. The forests of subarctic climate are often called the taiga. Taiga is the largest land zone in the world, making the timber there an important resource. The tropical regions are warm regions. The tropical region is divided into two zones, tropical wet and tropical wet and dry. In tropical wet zones, you will find rainforests. Of course, this is where we get the images of warm and wet climates. Most people associate the tropical with always meaning wet. It actually means warm. This is not always the case, though. In tropical wet and dry zones, the areas are similar to grasslands. Areas with at least 2.4 inches of rain per month fall in this zone. There are no seasons in tropical wet zones. Temperature and precipitation stays about the same year round. Tropical wet gets its name from the regular rainfall it receives throughout the year. It sometimes rains every day. The reason it rains so much here is because of the regular warm temperatures around the equator, which evaporate water and keep the humidity high. Most areas of tropical wet receive over 100 inches of rain per year although some receive nearly 300 inches per year. The constant rain and direct sunlight on the equator allow tropical rainforests to develop. Tropical rainforests only cover 6% of the Earth's surface, yet they produce 40% of the oxygen and support nearly half of all plant and animal species known to the Earth. These forests are so packed full of trees, the top layer, canopy layer, often blocks all the sunlight from reaching the forest floor. The second zone in the tropical rainy region is called tropical wet and dry. Tropical wet and dry is found near the equator, usually on the outer edges of tropical wet climate areas. The largest areas of tropical wet and dry are found in Africa, Brazil, and India. This zone is what we know of as the savanna. It has a wet and a dry season. They are also called tropical grasslands. The lack of regular rainfall prevents most trees from surviving in this zone, so the most common vegetation types are grasses and shrubs with a few scattered trees. If you have ever seen The Lion King, the savanna is the type of area we are talking about. Temperate Marine Climate Region All three of these zones have humid and mild winters. Marine West Coast can have as much rain as a tropical rainforest, but they still have seasons. This is the coolest temperate marine zone. Mediterranean is usually humid and warm year-round, but has seasonal variation due to temperature. Humid subtropical is a little drier and has seasons. In the United States, this zone is found in the southeast in states like Georgia and South Carolina. This is the warmest temperate marine zone. The Mediterranean climate zone gets its name from the climate found around the coastal areas of the Mediterranean Sea. The Mediterranean climate is very mild, meaning it has few extreme temperatures. It really has two seasons. The climate is known for warm to hot, dry summers, and mild to cool, wet winters. The cause of this climate is directly related to the large bodies of water such as the Mediterranean Sea and ocean currents. During the summer, cold currents keep the climate mild and dry. Ocean currents shift as the seasons change. During the winter, the water that was warmed up all summer moves in and keeps the land warm and often brings rain. The seasonal changes are due to changes in ocean currents and water temperature. The climate in the Mediterranean zone is fairly dry. Mediterranean climates receive around 20 inches of yearly rainfall. There are two main types of vegetation here. One has dense shrubs and small trees, and the other has grasses, a few large trees. The marine west coast climate zone is usually located along the west coast of continents, mid-latitude meeting midway between the tropics and the polar region. Marine west coast climates are influenced by the presence of mountains. This is why it covers more land in Europe than it does in North America. North America's mountains block the humid air from moving farther inland. The range of temperatures is fairly small. This means the temperatures don't have major differences during different seasons, so it is mild. For this reason, the marine west coast zone really has only two seasons, summer and winter. The ocean keeps the air over the land cool in summer and warm in the winter. This creates a mild but yet climate. This climate is similar to a Mediterranean climate because of the influence of ocean currents. The humid 
subtropical climate is found primarily on the east coast of the continent, between 20 degrees and 40 degrees north and south of the equator. This is the warmest marine climate. The southeast United States is a good example of this climate. Florida has a humid subtropical climate. Temperatures usually stay high, above 70, throughout the year, but cool down for a few months, so there are really only two seasons here, summer and winter. The winter season is not a cold winter. Summer season lasts longer since humid subtropical areas are somewhat near the equator. The polar climate region has two zones, the tundra and the ice caps. The tundra is milder than the ice cap zone. Let's see how else they are unique. Tundra climate is mainly found along the coast of the Arctic Ocean. Tundra is the transition climate between ice cap and subarctic zone in the temperate continental region. Tundra climate areas experience a very harsh winter and a cool summer. During the summer, m much of the snow and ice melts and forms soggy marshes and bogs. However, some of the deeper parts of the soil stay frozen even, though, even through the summer. A layer called permafrost, as in permanent frost. The permafrost prevents the melted snow and ice from draining into the groundwater, so marshes and bogs form. Winters are very harsh in the tundra climate. These areas mainly receive indirect sunlight. Indirect sunlight delivers light, but little heat. Tundra climates receive low levels of precipitation. The permafrost, frozen soil, prevents any trees from growing here. Many different types of mosses, lichens, and algae grow in a tundra climate. Ice cap climate is only located near the poles, but this climate covers nearly 20% of the Earth. This is the most extreme climate on Earth. It is mainly found in Antarctica and the land around the Arctic Ocean, especially Greenland. In the Southern Hemisphere, it is centered on the South Pole, and in the Northern Hemisphere, it is centered on the North Pole. Since the ice cap zone is at the poles, it has extreme seasons. There isn't a traditional summer since the temperatures almost never go above freezing. However, there are two seasons. The seasons are determined by the amount of light. During the summer, there are nearly 24 hours of light since the pole is pointed towards the sun. During the winter, the pole is facing away from the sun, which causes nearly 24 hours of darkness. There are two other climate regions that can be found throughout the Earth. These two regions are not restricted to certain latitudes. They can be found anywhere on the Earth. They are the highland regions and the dry regions. We will look at each of them individually. Highland climate is the climate of high land. So this climate is found in high mountain areas on elevated plateaus. It is found on single mountains and also large areas of high elevation, such as the Plateau of Tibet. This climate is sometimes called alpine climate. There are no seasons in highland climate. Any seasonal differences would only be felt at low elevations near the bottom of a mountain. The reason mountains need their own climate type is because the climate changes as you move up the mountain. At the base of a mountain, it might be 80 degrees and sunny, but as you climb the mountain, it will get colder and be rainy. As you keep climbing, it might be snowy and freezing cold. In fact, the temperature drops about 3 degrees every 1,000 feet in elevation as you move up a mountain. So the temperatures in Highland depends on the elevation. The dry region is the second region which is not defined by latitude. These areas have very low precipitation amounts. It can be found any place that has less than 10 inches of precipitation per year. The evaporation rate here is potentially higher than the precipitation amount leaving the area with very little moisture. These areas can be seen on the map in tan and light yellow. The word arid means dry. Lack of precipitation is the main factor that defines the arid climate. To have an arid climate, an area must receive less than 10 inches of rain per year. However, many areas of arid climate receive far less than that. If land has an arid climate, it usually is a desert. Since semi-arid climates are found surrounding arid climates, it is no surprise that they are dry areas. Think of semi-arid as a transition climate between dry and wetter places. An area is considered semi-arid if it averages between 10 to 20 inches of rain yearly. Like that of arid climate, semi-arid climate precipitation levels are due to ocean currents. Ocean currents shift with the seasons. When the ocean currents shift, it dramatically changes the climate of land. Semi-arid areas are too dry to support forest trees, but a few scattered trees that require less water can be found here. These zones are often referred to as prairies and, or grasslands, such as the Great Plains in the United States. This is the main difference between arid and semi-arid zones. Thanks for listening. See you tomorrow.